Overlooking Kenmare Bay and dating all the way back to 1897 is the beautiful Kenmare Park Hotel. And this stunning Victorian house has been under the watchful eye of Ireland's most loved hotelier, Francis Brennan, for 40 years. He's a man with a very strong work ethic and a very strong faith. Okay. Sugar. No sugar. No, that's fine. That's fine. I think you said it. It was perfect. Uh, you, use that. You're one of the key. Already, I'm giving out to here. Yeah. <laughs> Growing up, did you have a faithful home? Um, yeah, we did. Well, we were Catholic, all right. As that's just the way we were. Okay, actually, we lived on a road of 37 houses, and 35 of them were Protestant. Really? Can you believe that? And there we were in the midst of it all. In Sandyford? Yeah. They were all Protestant. That was just, I don't know how. Was faith something that was important or was it just something you did because it was no. cultural and... It was, but listen, we lived in normal Ireland, suburban Ireland, if I could call it that right. And mum and dad were good Catholics and we always went to mass and we never said we we're not going or we didn't ever kick or nothing like that. Um, everybody thought I'd be a priest. To be honest, why did they think you'd be a priest? Because I was always a bit gentle and kind of kind and nice, I suppose. I don't know, but my vocation came to the hotel business rather than to being a priestly. But did you dance around the idea of a vocation for the priest? No, never, never. Funny enough, never. Like I never went through that. You know, you talk to yourself and say, "Can I be a priest? Or should I be a priest? Or might I be a priest?" No, I never went there. So when did it start to become real for you, Francis, then? Not just something that you were doing because it was just always done? Well, I, I, I suppose when I got older, when I got all those breaks and I got the hotel and then other things happened, and then I often think that, I don't know, I think that I'm just, my faith gives me a great inner peace, which helps me in the life I live. But when you were growing up, as many young people do, did you question your faith or question no. God? Or even when the times were going good, did you think... I kind of forget about God. I don't need God at the moment. I've got the hotel. I've got all the no, money in the I bank. pray every day. I say prayers every single day of my life. I never miss, you know. And if I was in Dublin today now, and supposing I had a, a meeting like at 11 o'clock and I had a meeting at nine, and the nine ended quick, I'd be checking really quick, is Clarendon Street, is there Mass at 10? I just like to go to Mass. And when I travel the world, I always go to Mass, wherever I am. Every Sunday? Yeah, because I love the community element of a church. And it's just been so good to me as a person, because over the years, I'd be in Chinatown in San Francisco, or I'd be in uh, Rye, New York, or wherever it would be, and I'd be at Mass on Sunday. You know, and afterwards, they have this coffee and buns downstairs nearly, you know. I don't go for the coffee and buns now, but <laughs> they do have it always. And it's nice to go down, and then you meet people, and of course, when you're Irish, you're ever, we're universally liked as people, um, which is a great plus for us as a nation. But is it that community that is fulfilling something inside you, or is it something more? Like, when you go into Mass, and they talk about the body and blood of Christ. You, you believe in it? Or are you there because there's comfort and familiarity? No, no. I just, I just, I love my faith. I've always loved it, okay? I don't query it too much. And I don't ask those questions that you're asking of me now. Because I just don't go there, okay? I, like, if someone walked in here and said, you're, with a gun and said, you're going, to, I got, you're going to be shot now, I'd say, oh, puke, I was looking forward to tomorrow. But I have no fear of going across the line of death because I have a great faith. During the 1980s, after managing the hotel for several years, 26-year-old Francis set his sights on ownership of the property. I got the hotel when I was very young, I was in my mid-twenties, all right? And it was a big story, but I never made it a story at that time because I just thought, get on with the job, don't say too much, keep going. You know, and when I bought the hotel, I had to borrow the money in Switzerland, which was like, what? Because those times, you wouldn't even do it today nearly. Now, you make it sound so easy that you went to Switzerland and got some money to buy a hotel, but you were only 26 years of age. Yeah. And you went to Switzerland because banks here laughed you out the door? Well, there was 13 banks. I went, I always remember, in uh, South Mall in Cork was the financial centre, still is. Okay, and I was going to the, this, the AIB, say, and Bank of Ireland and Trustee Savings Bank and ACC and the ICC and all these different banks looking for money. And I remember, like, I'd have a meeting on a Tuesday in one and then on Wednesday, but I'd wear the the fawn coat on Monday and the 
black coat on Tuesday and the blue coat on Wednesday so that they mightn't even notice I was running up and down the street with a briefcase the same fella going in and out of every bank that's the truth and what did they say to you no they all way. said no way no you're way. too young and it's too big a deal it wasn't a small deal now it was a multi-million deal at the time alright so it wouldn't have been a small deal like I wasn't getting it for 500,000 or anything and I never tell anybody how much I paid for it so I won't be telling you either but it was a big deal give us okay. a ballpark figure yeah it was mi- multi-million multi-million, multi-million yeah. 26 year old Francis Brennan yeah was running around asking banks yeah, for millions. All of them said, too big a deal and you're too young. Well, that didn't deter Francis. He got the money from Switzerland and bought the hotel. Isaac and Margaret Southern, it was once the stamping ground of Britain's money classes. And in the face of all the market indicators, it was reopened in 1980. The old Ken Margaret Southern now became the Park Hotel. Francis, the Irish hotel industry is in serious trouble. Ho- big hotels are laying staff off week in, week out. You down here seem to be on, on, on the crest of a wave. Is, is there an easy, a simple explanation for this? Well, again, in the opening strategy in 1980, when we sat down to work out what we would do, we looked around and felt that this area of Kerry, which attracts about 70% of most of the tourists that come to Ireland, come to this area on visits, that the top end of the market wasn't very well serviced in this area. Um, there wasn't the sort of hotel like Drumoland or Ashford that would be able to offer the same sort of style. How has it helped you in business? Or has it helped you in business? Because sometimes in business, you have to make decisions that are very good for the bottom line and for your shareholders or for yourself or for the bank account and maybe not so good for people. or for. Well, you know, so how has it changed the way you do business? You see, I always say if I died today, okay, I was a good employer. It's the first thing I always say, because I can tell you, go out and ask anybody, because I look after all my staff. And over the years, there have been staff in trouble in all sorts of ways. And I'd be there in the background, quiet, but looking after them, because they're my family, per se, okay? I believe in God, which I think is, I'm very lucky, all right? And my faith, I have no doubt about the life hereafter. So those three things have always kept me going. And I've always lived those three things that be a good employer, believe in God, and heaven thereafter. In the previous 24 hours, the banks had suffered an enormous fall in share prices. During the recession of 2009, Francis was pushed to the brink of financial ruin when he almost lost everything he had. So I know it's easy to appreciate God in the good times and say, okay, God was helping me here, find my location or whatever happens, but what about in the bad times? Like I know, in the recession, when everyone was hurting in the country and... Yes. I mean, I you, took, you took a hard hit as well. I didn't have a good recession, no. Why not? Hard, no, I took a very hard hit, you know, because I was involved in all sorts of things which were for my pension, for com- going forward. But when all that fell apart as it did, right, I still had a job here with a cash flow. I wasn't like a poor developer who was building offices and when they stopped being built, he had no money. But you still lost... Yeah, but nearly everything you'd had and built up. You see, I don't years. obsess about the past. You know, I'm very lucky. I don't look, I always go forward and I never say, like I lost, I don't know. I say I, I could have lost close to 10 million in cash now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over all the years that I put into things that I lost. So that's loss, right? But I don't, like... How can you not get upset about that, Francis? No, I don't. I, 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 I don't. I don't get upset. We had difficult years at the banks, all right, here at the hotel as well, because business dropped and, you know, people weren't. And I didn't let one employee go. I stayed with the staff. They worked with me fantastically. We all managed to take holidays at times where we wouldn't have before just to keep the things right. So we were, we were lucky like that. But I never, I don't look back and say, and I think that's a blessing, again, from God, I believe, all right, that I didn't have that within my mind because it would put you, you'd be, listen, for all the money that I lost, there isn't a bridge high enough to jump from, God bless us and save us. Do you know what I mean? Because it was a big amount, mm. right? So I just never looked back. I moved forward. We dropped Peter to pay Paul. We did all sorts of things. I got a media career in the middle of it all, which was brilliant because it was good for the hotel and also good for cash flow, which was good. So like you don't have to live at the high level at all times, you know? Francis, a bit of advice. We're heading into the new year. Everyone's making these new year resolutions and looking forward to the year ahead. But what advice would you give people, particularly young people? Whether you do or don't go to church on Sunday or whether you do or don't pray is your choice. And I just would ask youngsters to doubly think, like, why would you not go to Mass? Or why do you not say the odd prayer? Because I think throughout life, they will find a great solace in their faith and it will be of great benefit to them in years to come. That's the important thing in life, that we keep our faith alive and that we keep it interesting. 
or Father Francis. Francis, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Lord, thank you for all that you've given me this far in life, both my family and I. And please God, when the day comes, we'll meet at those pearly gates when we can have life ever after together. Amen.